Released back in 2017, the bunker is now one of the older businesses still commonly used in GTA Online. While it might be getting on in years, it still offers up some of the best passive money the game has to offer, along with a research function that allows you to unlock exclusive vehicle and weapon add-ons. In this video, I'll be doing a complete overview of all the ins and outs the bunker has to offer, digging deep into this complex business and showing you how to get the most out of it. The first thing you'll need to do is of course purchase a bunker, which can be done over at Maze Bank Foreclosures, where you'll be presented with a variety of locations. Pretty much anything around this region will be totally fine, there isn't really a right or wrong choice, just pick something that's close to your other properties or businesses. Personally I like the Grand Sonora Bunker and I tend to pick that for all of my accounts, but that tends to be because all of my MC businesses are located in this general area, but whichever one you go with, you'll have a choice of a few styles and upgrades. None of the upgrades are strictly necessary unless you want to set a spawn point here, in which case it's worth buying the personal quarters. The gun locker allows you to customise your loadout, which is pretty cool, but it's also available at a number of other properties, so you can always buy it later. The shooting range is a luxury and definitely not a necessity, but it is pretty cool. You or a group of friends can take on the shooting challenges and work your way through the various categories. If you manage to complete all of the second tier challenges, you'll even be rewarded with the unique perk of being able to hold 30 throwables instead of the usual 25. But it's mighty time consuming and as you can see, I couldn't be bothered, but hey, it's still a pretty cool feature. After purchasing the business, you'll be given a little introduction and told to log into the computer, where you'll eventually be instructed to set up the business by collecting a vehicle from some distant location. Once you deliver that back, your bunker will now be stocked with supplies and the real party can begin. Supplies are the lifeblood of the business. Whether you choose to manufacture weapons to sell for massive profit like this, or decide that you want to go down the route of researching new weapon and vehicle unlocks. Everything requires supplies in order to operate. Whichever route you pick, all of it can be controlled over on the computer where you started the business setup earlier. On here, you can assign your staff to manufacture weapons or research unlocks exclusively. Or if you want the best of both worlds, you do have the option of splitting their resources between the two by assigning them to both. There are a lot of research projects to unlock though, 51 in total to be exact. And the most annoying part about it is they're completely random. You have no control or choice over what items you get and when. But for all of that, some of them are really cool and they're all completely exclusive to bunker research. So if you want them, this is the only way to do it. Once the supplies from the setup have run out, you'll need to stock it on a regular basis in order to progress the research or manufacturing. The easiest and most efficient way of topping them up is by purchasing them for 75k. All you have to do is hit the button, sit back for 10 or 15 minutes, and before long they'll be delivered right to your door and your workers can carry on doing what they do. The only problem with going with the easy option is not only can the supplies get quite expensive, but in order for it to make financial sense, you'll also need to purchase some upgrades. The security upgrade will reduce the chance of your business being raided. It's a nice perk if you've got the money, but honestly, you don't get raided very often and a lot of players never bother. However, it's a different story when it comes to the staffing and equipment upgrades. Without them, your operation will be substantially less efficient and the cost of supplies will outweigh the production capacity of the business. In a nutshell, if you can't afford the upgrades yet, do not buy supplies as you'll just end up losing money. Instead, your only option at this stage will be to steal them. The supply missions vary a lot and some are certainly harder than others. Occasionally, you'll catch a break though and be able to collect multiple packages at a time. But even so, if you're playing solo, it can take a lot of steel missions to keep your bunker fully stocked. If the bunker is your one and only business, chances are you'll be spending most of your time doing these supply missions. As soon as you've bought the staffing and equipment upgrade though, be sure to buy the supplies instead, which will open up a bunch of time for making money elsewhere in the game while you wait for them to do their thing. Either way, once you've got some supplies squared away, your technicians can get to work and start researching your first project. When your staff are focused on research alone, it will take three real life hours and about 50k or two thirds of a bar worth of supplies for every item to unlock. When split between manufacturing and research, it will take six hours and about $100,000 worth of supplies per project. But that does add to your bunker stock as well, which you can sell and earn a bit of money on the side. If however you get impatient and want to manually increase your research progress, a feature added last year actually allows you to do just that. 
Simply call Agent 14 on your phone, where if you select Request Bunker Research, you'll be loaded up with a collect and deliver style mission that will increase your bunker's research bar by a decent little chunk. The mission isn't very friendly for new players though, and will instruct you to locate and destroy an armoured up juggernaut, toting his usual high HP and minigun. If that wasn't bad enough, he'll be surrounded by police, who will immediately try and swarm you, even though you're saving the donut swilling bacon boys and doing their job for them. I'd advise getting a weaponized vehicle that can in some way help protect you from the onslaught of bullets until you can get yourself a clean enough position to fire off some rockets and finally get this under wraps. Once he's finally taken out, you can go and land and make your way over to where his body is before collecting his minigun as a trophy and of course the research data that we came for. When you return that to the bunker, you'll discover that your research bar has gone up by a decent little bit, but considering we just dipped in and out of a war zone, I felt that they were a little bit stingy, but hey, I'll leave that one up to you. One final feature worth considering is called fast tracking. As soon as a research project has been started, you'll be given the option of unlocking it immediately without the need for bothering with supplies. It does come with a hefty price tag of 225k though, but the second it's clicked, you will finish unlocking whatever research item your bunker staff were working on. If you're running your bunker 24-7 with all upgrades purchased and a constant flow of supplies, it is possible to unlock all research items by using this method and still make a profit, but it requires a lot of time and money management to pull it off successfully. The obvious choice you might think would be to just set your staff to both and get the best of both worlds. And you can do that, but in my experience it's very glitchy. Often you won't get your due and both research and manufacturing progress will be lesser than if you were just setting your staff to do one or the other exclusively. None of the research projects are crucial for new players, and my advice is just use the bunker strictly for manufacturing and selling product until you've got enough money to buy a secondary business. At that point, set your bunker to full research mode and use the money that you make from your other businesses to pay for the supplies. As an example, one payphone hit from the agency pays 85k for a 5 minute mission, which will cover your supply costs and then some. It's way easier to make money from things like that and just keep the bunker running in the background. At this point you might be wondering what all the fuss is about. I mean, some of the research unlocks are just bloody liveries for god's sake. But there is some really good stuff hidden away in there as well. Not only does it give you new vehicle conversions with a bunch of new weapon add-ons, but it also gives you access to some truly impressive hardware unlocks for your guns. New muzzles, brakes, scopes, suppressors, and even ammunition types will become available. And oh boy, are some of them a lot of fun. Here we've got a fully tricked out heavy sniper rifle, which has an adjustable thermal scope that can pick up heat signatures for the entire length of its scoping capacity. Add to that some fancy new explosive ammunition and you've got just about the most OP weapon in the entire game. Jets, oppressor noobs, camouflage tryhards, whatever challenge you got, chances are this thing's got an answer for it. And that's just a little sample of what the research unlocks can get you. They might be expensive, but they're totally worth it for the right player. But when I say it's expensive, it really can get out of hand. To be able to use most of the vehicle and weapon unlocks that you get from Bunker Research, you'll most likely have to buy an MOC as well. This is a special vehicle that has a lot of useful features, but is primarily used for upgrading vehicles and guns with the various new parts that you unlock from the bunker. It comes stock though, and will need its own set of upgrades to get the most out of it. Now we're going to be looking at the manufacturing side of the bunker business, where your staff will turn your bought or acquired supplies into product available for you to deliver and sell for a big profit. Manufacturing sellable product is a bit more straightforward than the research though. Simply keep your bunker topped up with supplies and it will produce guns ready for you to sell. The only thing that varies is whether you're playing solo or playing with friends who can help you with the sale missions. When going solo, you'll want to only purchase one round of supplies to guarantee a one vehicle sale. 75k worth of supplies will get you 210k worth of product and will take a bit over two hours before it's ready to sell. A full sale can have up to four vehicles to deliver and will take five full rounds of supplies to max out your product at a value of just over $1 million per sale and taking almost 12 hours to manufacture. 
While that might take a long time, the profit margin is bloody good for base rates. If you want to boost it even further though, and don't mind risking a busy public lobby, you can earn an additional 2.5% for every player in the session, up to a max of 50%, meaning that you can potentially earn over $1.5 million for a single sale. But of course, if you get blown up by some wanker who wasn't hugged enough as a child, you're going to lose all of the product and the money that you spent on the supplies. So be sure to observe the activity in your current lobby before starting. Whatever you do, make sure that you sell to the further location. It's the only way to make decent money and all of the methods revolve around it anyway. As for the missions themselves, well, they actually vary quite a lot. Some of them are really easy and simply require you to drive from one end of the map to the other. However, a lot of them can actually be quite difficult compared to the other delivery missions in the game. Which is why, if you're playing solo, it's super important that you only ever buy one round of supplies before selling to ensure that you only get one vehicle. If you get the buggy mission like I've got at the moment, you'll be required to deliver to a series of five obscure locations dotted all over the map. Worse than that though, the GPS will almost exclusively send you to the wrong location, often saying it's on top of a bridge when really it's underneath and things like that. Even with a perfect run, you'll only have a couple of minutes to spare by the time you deliver all of the goods. Get lost or crash too many times and it's super easy to fail before the last drop. And at max capacity, you'll have to deliver four of these bloody things. So yeah, make sure that you come prepared and have friends to help you if you plan on selling a full bunker. If not though, and you're going solo, just stick to my rule of buying one round of supplies before selling and you'll be right as rain. The other mission that can be a bit challenging for new solo players is the insurgent mission that has you dropping deliveries at five locations, guarded by very aggressive mercenaries. With friends, it's a total cakewalk, and honestly a lot of fun, as everyone scrambles to try and be the first person to blow everything up. Running solo though, you'll want to make sure that immediately after you make a drop, to jump out of the car and onto the roof, where if you press or hold the enter vehicle button, you'll slide into the turret seat. Not only does this give you control of a 50 cal machine gun, but it also provides some pretty top-notch protection when facing the enemy. Sometimes the NPCs can get a bit derpy though and will get themselves stuck somewhere, in which case you might have to hunt them down and give them a friendly little nudge to remind them to let go and move on with their lives. And the final tip I'll give is for the Phantom Wedge. Now if you play your cards right, you'll find this to be the easiest and most enjoyable cell mission available. But it's very easy to get carried away with the big cone on the front, and if you jackknife the truck and disconnect the trailer, it'll often have to respawn, which could not only take a long time, but you'll also be in for a world of hurt trying to get it connected again, especially while being swarmed by police the entire time. So yeah, just follow the GPS and don't go too crazy fast. Trust me, you'll still have a bunch of fun. It's basically impossible to not have a big smile slapped on your face when you're driving this thing. Now that we've covered all things research and sale missions, the only other thing worth considering when it comes to making money is the excess weapon parts that will collect roughly once every in-game day and can be delivered by interacting with this truck inside your bunker. Once started, you'll be tasked with driving the truck to any number of ammunition stores dotted around the map. It's totally luck of the draw as to which one you get, sometimes you'll only have to drive one or two miles, but other times you'll be going right into the belly of Los Santos. Either way though, it's an easy mission, where your only challenge is having to deal with a few enemies that attack you as you drive. You can choose to take them out, or just drive fast and try to avoid them. But either way, once you get to the drop off, you'll immediately be rewarded with 50k for your troubles. Not bad for something that only takes about 5 minutes. Like I say, the bunker might be old at this point, but it's still offering up some seriously decent money. And with game-changing add-ons that you can unlock with research, both new and experienced players alike can get a lot out of this multifaceted business. If you found the video useful, tapping the thumbs up button certainly is appreciated. If you're new to the channel and you like making money in GTA Online, be sure to subscribe and turn on notifications to stay updated of all my upcoming content. And of course, if you've got any questions or need help with anything at all, be sure to connect up on my Twitter or my Discord server and shoot me a message. Until we meet again, you bunch of legends. I am Red Knight Drayton, and I'll catch you on the next one.